going on, y'all? Today, I'm Fort Trey. I got with me Ray Daniels, the culture referee. And this is The God Show. And we got a very, 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 very special guest. It's Super not too many people who I call my brother, who know the family, right. Bronx Bomber. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to call him a specialist. I don't know what we're going to call him. He got, his chains is way bigger than mine, so I should let y'all know where we at in life. I'm trying to get there. We got Chubby Baby on the show. Everybody get up for Chubby Baby. Let's get it. Crazy, man. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Let's get it. Let's get it. Shit, man. Today, we're going to be talking about A&Rs and managers as we got two of the greatest in the building with me today. So I, That's I really, the truth. I really wanted to uh, first let the people know who you are, Chubby. Like, what? What, what, you you got a lot of titles on your head, you know what I'm saying? So just let the people know what what all is it that you really do. Well, you know, I, I thought I had a bunch of titles, but it's only one. Only one. And that's a record man. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm a record man. You okay. know what I mean? I earned that title, and I, I'm in that elite. But it's unfair to call him just a record man because he's also the guy. He's not. He not only. First of all, Chubby is rare because he he can he can actually make the song. Yes. He can produce the song. Yes. He can rap the song. He can work your song in the clubs if he have to, and he can A and R it, beginning to the end. I, I don't even, shop. I can't even do all that shit. I, I, one I can't stop shop, shit. yeah. One stop shop, man. That's crazy. So like, what all does a, uh, as far as A and R's, man? Like, what all does an A and R actually do? Like, A and R job is really a, it's a hard job. I didn't even know when I was A and R when I was A and R. You know, you know, back in my Dipset days, we, I just be like, oh, that line right there was that's hard. But it's hooked. It's crazy. We need to we need to drop this song. Yeah. And that just transpired into my my ears engaging more into the music. And I just feel like A and R is a feeling. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like when you see a girl you like, you know your taste. If you if you if you're a woman, you don't you don't like it with good shoes and got hair done right, then I know what kind of guy you is. Exactly. You know that what I mean? Sense. It's it's taste. A and R is all about taste. It's I all about say that. taste. Whether you that no matter where you at, if your taste level is there, and you got to keep that shit sharp constantly, period, to survive in this. Yeah, so. man. Cause guess what? We want we like snipers. Mm-hmm. If we miss, we get data for the next twenty things that we bring in the door. <laughs> I told him that. I told him stick with you. Hey, yeah. bro. That's why I tell people our wins stick with us. You get to go home and start over and change your name and become somebody else. But with us. They in the room, and you know, when you working for certain people, they like, yo, man, I got this next thing. And they like, your next big thing, your next big, the last big thing was Chocolate Daddy. Yeah. And Chocolate Daddy sold 10,000 units. Chocolate you don't know the next big thing, brother. <laughs> yeah. Go sit down. Hold on, you're not getting that from, right? Uh, 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 get them from the Greek. <laughs> Puff was like, Puff character was like, who you sign? So, who you sign? Cho yeah. Chocolate Daddy. Chocolate. How many fucking units did he sell? He said 20,000. He was like, Proud of every unit. <laughs> What'd you say? Proud of every proud of every unit, sir. <laughs> I where you got that from. So originally, you didn't even want to be on the business side, though. Like you, you really. I'm gonna be honest, honest with you, man. Now, look, we got we could cut all the generic shit. Okay. I was in the streets, man. I'm about to say, man. You got to chubby, man. Chubby I was like, selling drugs, man. You know, as a young kid. You know what I mean? Just like every other kid in the Bronx, hustling. Cam seen something in me I didn't see in myself. Mm. How did Cam grab you though? How did you say. how did you get with Cam and how did he see you? And how did he convince was, you to 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 cause you bullheaded? You a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Leo's a motherfucking bullheaded people. You a Leo, I know. So you bullheaded. So how does he get you to convince you to try to do something else? Yeah, he you know what? It was that time when he bought that Lamborghini. That shit fucked me up. <laughs> cause I was I was riding Range Rovers in Shit, and, and me and Cam would tell you this. We was on the same level. I was maybe, had maybe more money than Cam at this mm, time. Yeah. Mm. And I wake up one day. He got the Lambo. He got more money than me. Mm. I ain't like that shit. And he ain't taking the chances. <laughs> yeah, he ain't taking the risk. I see y'all. Yeah. Hold up. So I had to go back to the hood and tell everybody, look, bro. <laughs> shit different. But you know, <laughs> you know, and this is like when, you know, in my early years when we was around like, Peggy and all these guys, 95 and 96. We just wanted to be some fly kids from, from the hoods, you know what I'm saying? Me, Huddy Six, you know, Sugar J, Mace, Cam. We would just want to be fly, you know? And then 98, 99, stuff changed, you know what I mean? When I got out of prison, all my guys was getting to the money. 
you know, like money is flowing mm. in New York City at this time. Mm. And I'm like, yo, I got to get a piece of it. <laughs> but I always had the mentality of hustling. Yeah. So I was hustling, and it was taking me a longer time to get to that point. And this guy just got there with her. And I was like, this is the path I need to be on. But even then, he pulled me from the streets. Mm. Because I was in the streets, but Cam would come and get me take me to all the meetings with him, him and Dame and Biggs, and let me see stuff that I, a normal guy wouldn't be able to see. That's fine. Riding private jets, you know, going places, and we 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 built a crew called Dipset, mm. mm -hmm. right? Joel Santana is our first artist that we're in R, and I'm seeing how Cam is disciplining him. Mm. He showed me, like, what? So we rapping, and he like, Cam, like, yo, you ain't got this song ready by the time we get to Hit Factory. You ain't rapping today. <laughs> you had the whole song ready. That's crazy. So on the ride from, say, 140th, wherever the fuck we was at, till we get downtown to Hit Factory, you better have your whole verse ready to go. Oh, wow. Or she wasn't making the cut. That's crazy. That's real rapid. So I'm gonna ask you a question. So what was the difference? What would you say the difference is between the streets and the music that you notice? Like when it came to like just your perspective on it. Man, you know, I'm gonna be honest. If you to be real, streets was more of a risk, but it was more it's more real than the music business. Mm. People in the streets keep their word more than people in the music business. Word. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. I the music it business, oh yo, yo, you know, I fuck with y'all, but go call you tomorrow. Got you. <laughs> they're not calling. They're not calling. <laughs> you see him again the next party a month ago. He like, oh, what's up, nigga? Ah, dog. You supposed to call me in the streets? You don't call a motherfucker tomorrow. He pulling up about to shoot your block up. That's real. So, so there's no you, honor in this. In the, it's in no. The, it's it's you know when you mix you can't mix. And I told L.A. Reid one this one day. Don't put sheep in the lions then. Mm. Cause they're gonna get attacked and ate. <laughs> I'm a lion. Don't put no sheep around me. Cause I'm gonna be very intimidated. Intimidating to them. You know what I mean? I can't lie to you. Some of the best time of my life is that little short amount of period, that a time that we worked that epic together. Let Some of the that. best times of my life is the moment. First of all, let's just be real here. I'm gonna be honest. I never had an AR title, and I go on record saying this. Until Ray Daniels convinced me to get on that fucking plane <laughs> I did. at seven in the morning. We did <laughs> to go to New York to caught talk the black to car, Reed. caught the black car to yeah. the office. The whole time I'm telling him, and we in the car. And so let me give you some example about Chubby. Chubby is my not nah, real talk. I want you to understand. Like I love this brother. Like I don't want to say nigga because I feel like it's gonna devalue how much I love him because I know his wife, I know his kids, I just know him. I've been knowing him for years. We in the a &R meeting, L.A. says, I need a, ra a rap man. I need a rap guy. I'm like, I got the perfect person. I remember three names thrown in the room. I said, Chubby. And he was like, Ch I was like, L.A. But L.A. liked me because he knew I cared. So he was like, bring him up. We was, and it was like, we flew up. I called Chubby like, yo, I got something for you. I got a job for you. He was like, I was like, bro, please just come, come. I, 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 it's Because, you know, like he said, when people tell you they're going to do something in our business, you gotta hold that shit with a grain of salt. It's like, man, this yeah. motherfucker. All right, all right, cool. So I hit Chubby. I, I think I have my assistant who, when I left, became your assistant, Kate. I hit yeah. Kate. I said, Kate, yeah. hit. Mind you, I could have hit him myself, but I said, hit Chubby for me. Tell, I get his information for travel. We fly to New York. So we on our, when we, under, when we in the car, we on our way. And Chubby is like, so Chubby is like, like we both, we, we brag different, but Chubby is like, in your face with his shit. Like, I always admire that. <laughs> so, we, so we in the car, you know what it felt like? It felt like that scene uh, with Ice Cube. You ever seen Friday, Next Friday? Yeah, yeah. With Ice Cube and, um, and, um, and, and, and Mike Epps in the car. He was like, we ain't the police. He's like, we something like them. <laughs> like, it was like, it was like, I was like kind of telling Chubby, look. So Chubby's like, yo, I got to make sure he know everything I got going on. I said, no, 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 don't do that. Bill. I said, don't do that. Just tell me you want to be an A&R. But man, but I do. I like you gonna be able to do all of that. But just tell me I'm gonna be an because I know how LA think. I know how LA think. He was yeah. just because LA is waiting to say no. Chubby got in the room. Chubby's like, man, that's what I do. LA was like, you win, you win. 
It, I mean, like, literally, but it was literally like, and then the, the you know, I don't think I ever told you this, but the best feeling I ever had being in my, first of all, I like what I do because what we do is change lives. Right. And Chubby always was getting money, always. Mm -hmm. But I remember him calling his wife and the kids and saying, I got the job, and them be like, oh, hey. he's like, we yeah, celebrating as soon as I get back. That was, a, that was a good moment for me. I was like, that's what it's about. Yeah, like, because I, I was in a space where I didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to. Why, really why not? Just, just attaching myself from the music. I want, I want to take a break. Like, when you've been, in, you've been in this business for throttle since 99, you know how many, you know how many doors I had to kick down? I, I'll tell you what I think, because that's my, I think he got, I think he was showing up for everybody else. And niggas weren't showing up for him like he was showing up for everybody. Uh, that, and to it. me, I saw that. Cause that's why I called him. I was like, nah. Cause I'm like, dog, I like you understand, I'm telling you, like Chubby has always been in the room saying what we need to win. Mm -hmm. What we need. Oh, we need this. Y'all need this done. I need this done. Playing everything you done. Too. Everything, back burner, everything. Everything mm -hmm. you need. You hit Chubb, he got you. Mm -hmm. So I I know why he felt that way. And you know why I I didn't I never really cared what other people got. Cause I made so many people rich. Mm -hmm. Right? And Open so many doors for people. I never cared about what the next person had. If I did, I did it from the heart, right? Because I was more, you know, I was so into the music. I love music. He loved music. That's how you're supposed to operate. You know what I mean? So, me coming, me being from New York, working in Atlanta, you know, this is when it gets a little spicy now. <laughs> because I feel like, you know, when I be in these circles, and they be like, man, you're New York niggas, man. I don't like that line because then you, cause it's like separate, it's segregating us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, what you mean, New York niggas? Like, I don't. I'm not biased. I like people. I like people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not a racist person. Yeah. I like white people, black people, Chinese yeah. people. Yeah, I like people. Right. If you're a bad person, I can be better than you. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a good person, I'm gonna be a great person. Reflect that energy. Right. That, yeah. I mean, I'm whatever you want to go. I get. If you go in here, I could go there. Right. So. You know, I never liked that, but because it's a challenge being from New York City and helping changing lives in Atlanta, Georgia. What was uh, some of the biggest challenges that you that you just getting to? people to understand? Because we move quick, we talk quick, mm -hmm. so I could be saying stuff and they'd be looking at me like, "Is he hustling us?" Yeah. Uh, okay. No, I'm not hustling you, but I'm hustling. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got that's fire. Family, I got to feed. Yeah. I'm not hustling you because yeah. I'm not trying to rob you. Yeah. But I'm hustling, nigga. Yeah. yeah. This is the fuck I do. Yeah. So, you know, I remember me coming down here, me and Polo, and me and Jim Jones. I'm like, yo, so I'm managing Jim at the time, me and Yandy, and uh, me, this diesel ass motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck is this nigga? It's Polo. <laughs> we in, we in, we in, we at Interscope. Yeah. Jimmy Iovine trying to give us, we got every label trying to give us the money because we dropped the biggest song in the world, mm -hmm. which is Ballin'. Mm -hmm. The biggest. Yep. Well, I don't think to this day it was not a song, Biggest Ballin'. Yep. That shit was, right? That shit and was crazy. we on top of the world. We meet Polo. I just moved to Atlanta. So me and, me and, me and Polo meet at his studio, Zach's, and I'm over there with him like, yo, I live here. You need to fuck with me. So he like, all right, man, cool. So he let me, you know, Polo let me come to the studio. I would sit there. And I, I want to tell every artist this, every executive this, what, whatever the fuck you do in this music business, listen to this line here. I sat in Polo's studio broke, right? Because mm -hmm. I was trying to figure it out. And my broke is a different broke, I'm going to be real. You starting over, but it wasn't. My broke is, I'm still balling, but I'm broke. Yeah. Because I still look good as a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Still fly. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's just that the money I was used to wasn't coming in. Yeah. Because I was in a transition. Yeah. Of a new new territory. Yeah. And trying to get out the streets. Mm. So that right there took a lot out of me. I'm used to getting to the fucking bag. Mm -hmm. And I just go cold turkey because three of my friends just got 60 years. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'm on mm -hmm. two federal indictments that I just, I just, I just weaved out of, mm -hmm. and be two federal trials. Eighty years I could have been doing. Mm. Thank God. So I told my, my kids, my two sons and my wife, 
I looked at them. My wife said, "You're gonna you're gonna lose us for your selfish, you know, mm. choices." So I left the streets alone from there. Mm. I said, "Music is the only thing I know. If I don't know music, I'm, a, I'm I got to hustle in the street." Mm -hmm. So I stayed there with Polo for six months. Me and Super Mario. Super Mario told me, "Fuck this. I, it's nothing here. <laughs> I'm out." I told him, "Okay, I'm still. I'm going back in." Yeah. Six fifty-eight in the morning. I got to take my kids to school. Zach is in there cooking up. I mean, carrying him, cooking up the turn me on record. Polo says, "I wish I could get Little Wayne on this record." Bingo. I said, "You want me to call him right now?" Polo looked at me like I was dumb. Went in the went inside, text Little Wayne. Said, "Look, I'm with this nigga named Polo." I don't really know him too well. But this is the time for me to get in. Yeah. I need you to knock this song out. He said, put him on the phone. Here goes little Wayne. Polo. Polo. I said, answer it. Wayne like, yo, you got my brother there. Send me the song, bro. I'm going to knock it out. Polo. Now the, the room is up. <laughs> Call my wife and said, the kids ain't going to school today. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need to make sure that this song exactly. got done. It's the future. And when I got the song done, Polo said, yo, I'm going to pay you. 25000 I told him, I said, yo, bro, I'm thinking about my bills. I'm like, I got this big-ass crib. It's 4000 a month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, keep the money. Just pay me and give me a job at Zone 4. I'm going to show you what I can do. Mm. Just cover my motherfucking Life. bills. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I got it from there. Exactly. And I said, first of all, you got to get this shit clear. I don't think you really fuck with baby like that. Yeah. But I did. So mm. I got it. I got I got this stuff in motion. Long story short, Polo gives me a job. But it took me six months of going to the studio every single day, sitting on that couch, building with him. Not making nothing, by the way. Not making anything. That's important. Cause see, the for opportunity. Cause see, these young people out here feel like their time is more valuable. They don't but see here's the crazy part. Six months feels long when you're in it. When you look back at it, it was nothing. But I was if you, learning. you can give that six months, if you can give yourself that six months, your life will change. Mm. We went on a run from there. You know, I got Wayne on turn, uh, turning me on, then drop it low for Esther Dean. You got you Jeezy on, um, on Love for, in the Club. For that, I brought Gucci. Mm -hmm. And I think I love her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or Spotlight. And then I had to, I had to go sit with Jeezy. Cause Jeezy was so mad that, he, that that Polo did them songs. Mm -hmm. Sat with Jeezy for like six hours. Like, you don't want to get on the biggest song that's about to be in the world. You really gonna miss this opportunity? <laughs> Jeezy looked at me. Cause me and Jeezy had a good relationship. You know, I knew I know Jeezy from the BMF days, and I brought him in the studio. He knocked it out. So a lot of the hits with Polo, up, you know. I've a and r that without even being an a and r Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just being chubby. Yeah. Because I was working the records, and then, I, and, and then I had my own shit going on. So at the same time, I got all the DJs, and I'm like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to break my own artist. So I, you know, I got this kid from Virginia named Mo Payne. I got my, my boy YV. He produced the beat. I put Yo Gotti on it. Because at this time, I'm trying to manage Yo Gotti. Mm -hmm. Right? And Gotti is not hot in Atlanta. Yeah. So we building our relationship then. Put him on this song. Hey, G ain't want to pay Yo Gotti $2,500 from party. Wow. You so say you didn't want to pay that. Nah. <laughs> but at this time now, I got a crew of guys with me. I'm, I'm making hella money now. Yeah. Because I'm on fire. And Polo and Jimmy Avino, what kind of asset I am. Exactly. And at this time, Jimmy tried to get me to come work directly at Interscope. He put a million dollars on the table with him and Puff. I turned it down. Why'd you do that? Because it wasn't, I would have to leave Polo. Uh, so you was like committed and already locked down. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to cross my friend. Yeah, nah, but no, it's, 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 it's deeper than that. He right. A lot of the times in this music business, they play divide and conquer. Yeah. Like, like, just how many times do you think they probably try to break up Baby and Slim? They try to break up Slim and, and Baby. Like, th like, that's the game. It's like, Shit, if Jordan and Pippen on the same team, we're going to draft Pippen. Come over here. We're going to pay you like you Jordan. Yeah. So that's the game. So Pope, you just don't fall Pope for that shit. Pulled me to the side and said, hey, nigga, it's a million dollars. You don't want to take that? 
So you feel like they wanted to break y'all up more so than even have you on the team? I, I don't know what was going on. All I know is they wanted me to come work there. Exactly. Yeah. So if I'd have took that obligation in Polo, I couldn't work for Polo because I'd be working for Jimmy. Oh, you can only, okay. Polo brought me in. So I'm, I'm a street nigga, so we don't do that. I don't cross my I can't go around my man. It's an honor. You know what I'm saying? So Puff ended up giving me a $250,000 Ciroc deal. So now I'm outside. I got Ciroc money, Zone 4 money, all kind of DJ money that I'm making, and just all kind of shit coming in. Enjoying your life. It's rolling. <laughs> the money's back rolling, and I'm like, it's all legit. Exactly. You and pay taxes. I told my boys, I said, let's do something exciting. I said, let's go. I said, we just breaking records. So first thing I did, I stole all the beat headphones from Zone, from Interscope, and shit, I shipped 50 headphones to Atlanta. Mm. And gave them to all the DJs. And Jimmy, this is I, when you couldn't get them. Jimmy, I've been cursing me out on the phone. Chubby, where's the headphones? I took all the samples. <laughs> he said, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Chubby, we need them. We need them. It's over with. I took all the headphones and Jimmy, they're gone. Fuck, what you want me to do? That shit already over Every with. DJ in Atlanta got them. Mm. Including Greg Street. Mm. He said, all right. That was a funny story. Did you do that to like build a relationship with the DJs? I did that because you got to give people, man. People need to get rewarded yeah. for their hard work. But, but not only that, this is a point in time where like people took, okay, so when Beast came out, Jimmy mind fucked the game. Like the first year, if you had a pair of Beats, you had to get it from somebody. Yeah, it was like. It wasn't in stores. It was, yeah. it was so like my first gift. pair of Beast phone, headphones, I got from Jimmy himself. Shit yeah. exclusive. Okay. But that's the shit that lets you know you was in, like, and, and if you got the headphones, that meant you was the shit in the it's game. Like the, one, the big ones with the batteries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So I gave all the DJs. Now I'm breaking my record. Meet me in the tunnel. I said, what are we going to do to light the whole city up? I told my boy, I said, yo, Alex is my man. I've been knowing Alex since I was hustling in the street. I met Alex and gave Alex $75,000 first time I met him mm. for, 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 three, for three tables. Mm. The first time we go to the party, the first one gets shut down. So Alex tried to keep the money. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, look, you got to get that money back. Oh, he said, no. So he goes and get Wolf. Mm. This is in 99. Yeah. Wolf comes out. Wolf's in the Bronx. Yes. He sees you. Wolf <laughs> sees me. He says, Alex, come here. <laughs> Give him his money back. <laughs> That's he real. Said, I'm not with you on this one. Alex said, he came to me, he came to me shaking. He said, I've never seen Wolf do that. I said, because there's more wolves out there. Mm. He was like, and I said, like, we're going to party with you. And we built the biggest relationship that I ever have in life. Yeah. Alex is one of my best friends today. Yeah. So... We start going to the club doing this campaign with 100 bottles every night. Mm -hmm. Every time I go there, I would say, yo, look, bring out 50 bottles, then another 50. Soon they break the record infamous. And the whole city was just like, we can't do this three nights. No, we did this shit for three months straight. Mm. Seven days a week. No breaks. 100 bottles every night. Giving them out. I don't even drink. <laughs> So, so you just did that kind of just like just to. He got so bad. Puff pulled me in his car and said, "Don't ever embarrass me like that again." <laughs> Why? Because that, that night he had like 40, 50 bottles, and I just said, "Alex, bring three hundred more." Wow. And we had four hundred bottles, and he couldn't buy none. He didn't like that. Mm. He said, "We don't shit on me. I'm your big brother, motherfucker." <laughs> I said it wasn't for you, it was just for the people, man. Exactly. Because I love Puff. And I look up to him. That's my man. So I'm like, he was laughing about this shit, but he was like, motherfucker, you're going crazy. It's online. Like, shit is crazy. You know, just giving that excitement. And I was breaking. Look at your guy today. You know what I mean? I'm the guy that got the story where Ray said. All the artists that y'all look up to, or y'all, I don't I ain't give it to when they was hot. I got with them when it was cold ice, mm -hmm. which is pure talent. I've never, I never signed the artist that had the hype. Yeah, and, and I, I want to say this. So out in our business, and I want y'all to pay attention. This is really important. In our business, you got a lot of people that are successful that have never built anything. Like, you know, they, they just are big enough 
and bold enough, and that goes to the non-honor part he was speaking about, where they'll take your shit. So there are some managers right now who people are praising that, have, that haven't even built the artists that they're getting praised for. Mm. Chubby is a, ch- now I'll give you, I got to say this because it's important. Chubby is a builder. He don't care if he got 100 followers or 100,000 followers. Mm. There are some managers out there that won't even touch you if you don't have 100,000 followers. That won't even touch you if you ain't hot. But that's because they can't give you what they don't have. Mm. They can't help you build because they ain't never built nothing themselves. Right. And Chubb is a builder, so Chubb has always been at the forefront of everything. Like, I remember being at a and meetings and him saying shit, and I'm just sitting back like, how the fuck does he know about this already? And then a week and two weeks later, it comes out who these people are. And I'm like, and then L.A. called me one day. He was like, yo, your man Chubby, man, your man Chubby be saying he be knowing what's going on before. Like, how does he know that? I'm like, I told you. I told because because every time you know if if whatever whatever Chubb would do something wrong he would Yo, hit me. I don't know what the fuck that mean was about with you and him, but when I got there, his expectations about me was so high. Yeah. Before I signed my contract, he said, "Yo, you need to give me Nicki Minaj on this on his Zyra Lawson record." I still ain't even signed yet. He said, "You do that, you in." So I said, "So we, damn, what was the handshake about?" He said, "No, you my man now." But go get that. I called Nikki G. Robert said, yo, I need, this, I need you to do this song. Call LA and tell him. Because Nicki Minaj did a whole project in my basement. Mm. Beam me up, Scotty. That was my engineer. Mm. Word. So pe- I see DJ Holiday did the mixtape. But, let, but let's just on record. Debbie brought on me. I didn't understand her. So I passed it to my cousin Prophet. Because she was just getting on my nerve every day. Mm. And I'm like, yo, I'm with Polo, Nikki, you, 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 you not on the same page as me. So here's the studio. Here you go. And that's how Beam Me Up Scotty came. Mm. One of her best projects today. Mm. And she, she came back in to L.A. Y'all, Chubby need this favor, I'm doing it. Mm. L.A. so oh, shit. And let me tell you something. And Ray can tell you this. When I got to when I got the Epic Records, I helped the company sell sixty million records in two and a half years. I brought four Grammys to the company. Mm. That nigga. <laughs> Signed. One of the biggest artists there. I don't get the credit for signing future, right? I never asked, I didn't even know what the fuck about signing him there was. All I knew was I'm holding you down and I'm gonna get you where the fuck you need to go. Mm. Operating I'm your like brother. Rooms. Exactly. Yeah. We didn't use titles as his man. I, I, I won't go on record and ever say I managed future. I was the big brother that had more experience and I got him to where he's at today. Mm. What, around what time was it that you and future actually started working together? And how did two, that come together? Yeah. Two, this was like 2010. This is like me and Rocco man. was tight first. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Rocco, man. That's my bro. Yeah, it was, me and Rocco was together last night in the strip club. And I see them. We chopped it up real quick. But swag season. And Rocco would get to the studio around 9 o'clock. And me and Future would get there between 6 and 9. We just start building. And the Future just told me, he said, he is the future. Because he pulled me to the side and said, you need to be with me. We're going to make history. I looked at him, I said, you sure? He said, yeah. I said, all right. But I still ain't gravitate to it because I'm working with Polo. The Esco, DJ Esco and Future see me and my wife at a restaurant. And he was like, oh, Chuck, come to the studio. This shit is for real. I got to the studio, listened to 1000, mixtape. And I said, oh, shit. It was Dirty Sprite wasn't even out yet. Yeah, this is like bare bones future. So, I mean, the work speaks for itself, but the bond speaks more. Mm. I don't got to talk to that kid for a month or two. We family. His kids and my kids be together. You know, we just did the Wakanda soundtrack together. Mm -hmm. You know, when I need him, he there. I tell people, I really saved hip-hop. And I can stand on that when I say that. Because I saved Future and Drake's relationship. Mm. Word. I want to speak on that, like how? When I say that, these two was at odds over a record. 
I seen this before with Mason Cam. Mm-hmm. That didn't end well. Why should we let Drake and Future do that? Yeah. Over a song. Mm-hmm. Drake is with me in Orlando. I got Future with me. We had Michael Jordan's party. And I just said, yo, look, man. Drake, we got to fix this. Future is right. You should have came through for him. Because didn't, didn't Drake not show up to the Tony he, Montana he, video? Yeah, and they did that on their own, right? Mm-hmm. Him and Propane, I had nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. So it, wasn't, it, didn't, it didn't get executed the right way. Mm-hmm. That's what it goes to being a manager and an A&R together. You got to execute these things. Mm. Because if you don't dot the I's and cross the T's on knowing who you need, who you need to talk to, Who's the manager? You got do you got the, the company's information because are you gonna get it signed off? Uh, understanding the backstory, the back, the, all the back detail of finishing the record. No, they just they just got the feature. Cause you know what it is. A lot of times, artists <laughs> artists will. Art, so let's say you want Chubby Baby on your record. Yeah, Chubby like bring me twenty five thousand right now. You thinking to yourself. Shit, it's on. 25,000. He gonna give you the verse right there that night. You probably ain't gonna give him a show up to the video. And you damn sure gonna have to call his label and call. And so you don't even understand that policy. So you thinking to yourself, man, I pay him 25,000. That ain't got nothing to do with me. So, don't know what that deal structure is. So when you, said, when you said you have to get in contact with the label, what is, what is that for like to get it? To get their permission, get it to get it clear. Yeah. Like, like you can't, you can't, when, when, the, when the label has rights to you, you can't clear. You can't just put out a record without their clearance, because uh, they, because here's a, here's we gotta know that they also have to work out a deal with the other label. So they gonna so if you the label, they gonna have to work out a deal with you. Okay, cool. You using Chubby, we taking fifty percent of all profits. Okay. You like damn like, and we want That's this. Crazy. So that means you yes. gotta send them send them money. So I, like I know there there have been instances where an artist has made more money off a song than the actual artist whose song it was. Yeah, that makes. I mean, that kind of makes sense because if you make the song, then it's like. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm just saying though. But if you don't know no better, yeah. and you just green and like like trust me, I've seen some green shit. Motherfucker pull up on Thug, pay him. He do the verse. He gonna do his part. That's what he said he was gonna do. By the way, you want you got hundred thousand for a verse. I got you, no problem. But you, it's so many other politics you got to deal with yeah. when you go out with that record. You gonna have to deal with. And if you not, if you don't understand that, you are gonna be a pissed motherfucker. So so that's what I'm saying. So when I say I saved hip hop. Is Future and Drake changed the game? Definitely. They showed people that you could collab mm-hmm. and make hits for the new generation. Mm-hmm. So when I see that, I look at it and say, I, I did my part mm-hmm. because I kept two superstars together. Mm-hmm. I'm like, look, fellas, let's let, let's get this cleaned up. It's bigger than us. Nah, for real. We get it. We get to the studio. Good cushion alcohol comes apart. Comes apart. And look how crazy this is. Good cushion alcohol. We, they did the hook. We sat down and talked. We never got to finish the song. But let me tell you, on the way from the jet, I, t- I called Mike Will. Yo, get the triangle right now. Have the beats ready. I got Drake and Future together. Mike Will said, boy, I'll be right there. Mm-hmm. Soon I get there, Mike Will, whoop, got the laptop. Drake, Drake's in the corner, Future's in this corner. I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Are we getting the work or what, y'all? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, both of them, because it's, it's, it's tension. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to clear the air. And when I clear the air, when that shit said, I said, these kids making magic. They never got to finish the song because they embraced each other. But I thought, but didn't, didn't that want to become a, my, my, my bitches love me? Yeah. Mike Will took the record. And gave it to G. Robinson. That's how Lil Wayne ended up getting it. Mm. Uh, that wasn't supposed to be Lil Wayne's record. Oh, that's my bitch love. Right. That shit's crazy. Damn. But, so you talking about A&R, I ain't on that. But he I didn't was, know that, though. Yeah. See, here's the crazy part, but this is the part. See, when you look at Chubby, Chubby, is a, he's like a, 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 what they call that shit, a Swiss Army knife. He can do it all. He can unscrew the shit, slice it up. He can do anything. So... If you don't, if you looking out for yourself, you like, man, all I gotta do is hit Chubby, baby. Chubby gonna make it happen. But you gotta look at him and be like, man, this dude would be a star at NR because he really is doing it. He just don't, 
No, he just mm-hmm. didn't know it. It was just like, nigga, that's what you are, by the way. You, you're a manager slash A&R. You're both. But here's, here's the one thing about the music business you got to understand, and I'll say this to anybody trying to be in it. Know how the money flows. Know how the money flows because there are people right now who have done less work, but because they sat in the right seat, they made the most money. Right, so like I give you examples, like, like there are some A and Rs who had literally made managers rich, way richer than they will ever be because the A and R did the work to break the artists. Mm. They, that's, that's my story every day. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I tell everybody out there, they looking at this now. When this come out, they're they're, they're not talking about them, and it's cool. But I've opened so many doors for managers to eat, A and Rs to eat. Mm-hmm. Off of my discoveries, mm-hmm. off my hard work, and off of my arguments in the label. Mm-hmm. See, I, see, I tell people a lot of these guys now, the executives, they got titles, but they don't got no power. Ellie Reed showed me what power was. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Iovine showed me what power I'm was. That impact. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I signed Twenty One Savage. Damn. Like we gift them with a Ferrari. I got to tell a story. Can I tell a story? Tell I got to tell you a story. I'm, so I'm working at Interscope. I just left Epic. Mind you, I brought Chubby to Epic. I left Epic. I'm at Interscope. I'm talking to my man, Dash. Love Dash. Shout out to Dash. He's he the president of Geffen now. This actually would change a lot of shit for him because I'm in Dash's office and he's like, yo, nigga, I'm signing 21 Savage. I'm like, man, dope. You know, I'm just getting to Interscope. I'm mm-hmm. happy to be here. I'm like, dope. Man, good for you. He was like, hell yeah, man. I had his birthday party. I did a dinner last night. Man, me and Key cool, me and Meezy, we all good. I'm signing him. I was like, man, dope, man. So I was like, so I was like, he was like, yeah, you know, um, he got to meet with L.A. Reid today, but I'm good. And you would have thought it was a, <laughs> you would have thought it was an emergency. I said, hold on, what? <laughs> Mind you, we chilling in the office. I'm like, what, what you mean? He got me with L.A.? He was like, yeah, yeah. Nigga, why you acting like that? I said, nigga, he's signing with L.A. today. <laughs> no. I worked for L.A. Reed. I know how he gets down. The doors are getting locked. You want smoke? Go on the roof. Can't smoke in the building, so you want smoke? Go on. You can't go downstairs and smoke because you go downstairs, you might get in your car and leave. You want smoke? Go on the roof. What, you want some chicks? Bring the chicks here. Oh, you want some drink? drink. He flew the lawyer out. He flew Bernie out. I flew everybody he out. He flew everybody out. Oh, he just different, man. I, ain't gonna lie. I just, I just, I just missed, I just missed that energy because that doesn't happen in today's business. LA flew everybody out. So I'm, so I'm, so me and Dash, so Dash was like, so I said, call him. He called him, they ain't answer. Call him, they ain't answer. They won't answer. <laughs> so I said, Chubby, baby. The whole time. I said, Chubby. The whole time. So I FaceTime Chubby. <laughs> Chubby don't even know. I'm, I'm really temperature checking. I FaceTime Chubby. Like, hey, what's up, nigga? And he like, what's up, nigga? Hey. And he showed me 21. I'm signing 21 right now. I'll call you back. Hung up the phone. Hung up the phone on me. So, but Dash heard it. He was like, what? Nigga, let's go there. <laughs> me and Dash drove the Interscope from, drove from Interscope to Epic at that Starbucks right downstairs. And we sat at that Starbucks. And I, we was in the car. That's why I love Dash, because... He gave a fuck. Yeah. Like, you understand how these niggas don't, like, he gave a fuck, my nigga. Like, you gotta understand something. It's like seven o'clock at night. It's nighttime. Me and him outside of Inesco, of Epic Office. And I'm like, Dash, look, that window, that's L.A. Reed's light window. The rest of the lights is off. Everybody in his office right now. I'm in and, and then I, so I called Chubby again. <laughs> Chubby, like, we closed it, nigga. We closed it. I got the phone. I just, I just drove Dash. So I just me, drove Dash back to the house. So I was let me like, nah. I closed the deal. The club I closed the deal with Twenty One was. First of all, it wouldn't have been no bidding war because I brought him to L.A. first. My first A and R meeting, I brought him in, didn't I? Yep. In Atlanta. Yep. But Twenty One ain't give L.A. the energy because he ain't know he shared the street. I said, L.A. look. This kid's gonna be a star. Mm-hmm. Everybody to come like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what he told me. Yeah, they ain't believe him. I'm looking at everybody like, stop telling LA like, they don't live out here. Y'all know what the fuck going on in Atlanta? Yeah, he oh Chubby stood on that by the way. Chubby said, yeah, Chubby was a street up. nigga. Chubby was a street nigga that walked in the room. That didn't give a fuck what nobody in the room said because he was like, I'm out there. I know what's really going on. And that's what mm-hmm. that's how he built his trust in LA. Cause most people will let the shit happen. And be like, I knew it. 
You don't do that with LA. He don't play that shit. Nigga, if you know it, you tell me now. Don't tell me after it happened. So Chubby be like, hey, and this one LA and Chubby wasn't even like that. He would be like, hey, I'm just trying to tell y'all who gonna be next, man. Y'all wanna hear me? Fine, I'll sit in the corner. And then a week later, shit pop up, and he'd be like, I, told LA, I gotta I listen said, to that nigga, Ray. I said, LA, you gonna keep paying me for, you gonna keep paying me this money for free. I said, I love this shit. I'm gonna sit back and chill. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my easy I like this shit. Nigga. <laughs> said, nigga, he woke up when he had to come back and get that 21 deal. Mm -hmm. So I go by the room, and 21 is in there. He's glued on the computer and he's not listening to me. I said, What you looking at? I go over to look. He's looking at cars. Oh, wow. He's looking at Ferraris. He already ah. knows. He like, <laughs> what I said, car? You want that car? I said, if you sign, I'm buying you that car. He said, say it ain't so. <laughs> oh, you had to say, my boy. <laughs> he said, say it ain't so. Yo, with, with the most evilest eyes you can see, I said, I promise you. I, ran, I said, Benny Pugh, come here. And he was what the fuck, Chubby? You've been here 12 hours. He takes it. That's another thing. When you sign up a deal with LA, nobody leaves. Nobody leaves. In turns. Legal, promo, a and R. Even if it's not, you're not the A&R. You stay in that room. Why is that? Because he understands the psyche of the artist in the room. That's right. If it's just me, you, and Chubby, like, think about that. Like, the day that your life changes, it looks a certain way in your head. Yeah. It, it don't look like you in a room by yourself signing paperwork. It looks like 30 people in the room waiting for you yeah. to sign, that everybody clapping. That's what it feels like. So okay. he understood that. So y'all all stay. Yeah, and he keeps teaching. counting who leaves, by the way. Yeah. You leave, he keeps LA counting. Said, LA said, get the wine, get the cigars, and dim the lights. I said, look, LA, <laughs> we ain't getting this deal. He said, what? I had to trick him. He said, why? He about to get the fuck out of here. He want this car. He said, we ain't buying him this car. He ain't signing. LA said, fuck, we gotta go old school. Get him the car. How much? <laughs> Extra three hundred dollars. I said twenty one. You got the car. Yo, you're that playing puppet strings. He said, "Where's the contract?" Exactly. Close deal. Puppet master. That's so crazy. Place. That's why I just want to say this, man. This is moments like this is why I love doing this shit because when you really get around power, that shit is that shit gets you drunk because it's like that's yeah, what it man. feel like. Because mm -hmm. you know, like, like it, it, by the way, I don't even know if that happens in today's music industry. I don't think it'll never happen again. I don't think it happens. Somebody's just ready to break the cycle and just be that motherfucker because you got to be ready to to go to to go against all odds. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like LA and me will argue, right? I love LA to death. He showed me how to be a record man because I'm some wild motherfucker up the street. Mm -hmm. I think I, I know my shit. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you something. Tell you something. <laughs> we was in a stop me one day. <laughs> LA was like, this is the first stabby Chubby ever was there. I don't even remember this. So Chubby coming in like Chubby, you know, he's Chubby. He, if you know him, you know him. So LA just like looking at him in the corner and shit. So Chubby said, so he kind of was like, he ain't want to fuck him, but Chubby said something that we all like, oh shit. So LA was like, yo, I fuck with you. But hey man, you're not a fucking artist, man. Take all them goddamn chains off. <laughs> Chubby was like, <laughs> <laughs> me. He was like, yeah, man, but we got to, that's for them. I need you to, yeah, he, he, yeah. he, but that's what he would do for you. He would make you, he would teach you how he to said, be an executive. Told yeah. me don't shine over Hard the, the artist. Yes, is that what he oh, said? Oh, that's smart. He said, look at you. And I'm, you got to think, I got all these cars, Jerry. He like, I said, but this is how we, this is how we work our mojo outside. Yeah. He said, you want to learn? And I understood. Yeah. One day, I, I'll never forget this. We was in Miami. I'm popping more than Future. Chubby baby in the building. Future said, hey, I need you to get off the couch. It's my, it's my show. Mm. I got the fuck down. Mm. If I didn't get down off that couch and respect mm -hmm. the artist, I wouldn't be one of his best friends to this day. So you gotta like allow them to, you know, like you said, let it's, them shine. It's, like, it's them. rules to this it's shit, man. Shit like and once you understand it, bro, like when you working with artists, it is their movie. You, you are the ego. fucking no. You, you are the co-star. Yeah. Now you can go home and live your own movie, but yeah. when you in there around them, it is their movie. It is about them. 
It is literally, like, dog, it is literally about them. And if it's not about them, they might not say it to you right there, but they feel something. And that's why I tell people I didn't want to be a one artist executive. Yeah. Or manager. Because that don't give you power. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I tell people, oh, yeah, I could do it again. And again and again. You know, I'll go get, like, I found light skin Keisha. She want to be, she, she said, I want to, she said something to me that I, I had to tell her. I was like, yo, don't tell nobody you you want to be an actress. I said, because if you're trying to be an artist, artists live and die by being an artist. If you want to be an actress, you need to take your ass and go get some headshots and get the fuck out of the studio. The worst thing you could do in the music business, if you are multi-talented, is describe yourself as anything other, other than, than an artist. Other than an if artist. If you come to the room, you be coming to the room thinking, I'm, I'm an artist slash uh, actress slash get model. Out, get get my the face. fuck out of here. You just told me, you just told me I'm one third of your, one third of your dream. Yeah. How the fuck you, I'm gonna give you 100% of my energy how, if I'm one third of your dream? I'm gonna tell you this. How can I give you, how you gonna tell me that and I'm giving you a thousand percent of me? Yeah. Cause you want all my resources. You want everything I got. So that if you want everything I got, then you gonna have to give me everything you got because the shit only works if you work. There are some artists, like, like let's be clear, Frank Ocean broke himself as Frank Ocean. Yep. He, he was on Def Jam. They didn't know. Signed the Tricky in them. He was signed the Tricky. Yeah, you know that? Yeah. Frank Ocean was on Def Jam. Yeah. Everybody's trying to sign this new kid, Frank Ocean, not knowing that he's already signed the Def Jam under a different name. Yeah, that's crazy. But that's what I'm saying. You artists break themselves, bro. We just give you the tools. I don't give a fuck what you say. You can put all the money and energy behind Chubby. But if, if I'm the star, I'm the shot. It's just the way the world That's works. So you, gotta, so you got to be committed to being the best artist you could be or you're going to lose all the energy because all we're going to do is lose money if your focus ain't there. I don't hear about your clothing line. See, I would have thought it was opposite because like the more that you can bring to the table outside. Fuck no. I don't want to hear about your Nobody clothing line. About you I don't want to hear about... Can I ask you a question? Yo, what's up? <laughs> Why would the fuck they give a fuck about you, all your other stuff when they not, it's not a part of their deal? But not even that. It takes you away from okay. what's needed. Okay. Like, See, we want to hit records, right? We don't, we don't want to hit movie. I feel that. I feel that. And I would have thought that just because that's more to bring towards the brand. But I do fuck understand no, what you're saying. They make money off your music. Yeah. Dog, nobody is happy when you are, uh, especially now, if you grow to that, that's different. But when you start off, bro, you better, I'm telling you, any artist listening, do not go in the room and say, I'm an actress slash artist. The same way you don't go in the room when you're trying to act and tell them I'm an actress slash model. These people, like me and Chubby, feed our entire families with this music shit. Which means that neither one of us have ever cheated the process. Mm -hmm. Nigga, six months in the studio, not getting paid. Remember I said that when I brought up this book. I'm like, are you willing to work for, six, for this many a year and not get paid? Nigga, he understands. Mm -hmm. You got to be committed to be? this shit. And if I'm going to put my money behind you, my energy, I need to know you in this shit let's, with me. Let's talk about when you do make the money and then you catch a dry run. When you got to hit the reset button. Because these jobs are high, you, then they let you go. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm like, yo, look, man, I'm at Sony. Why am I that? Why, why am I not there today? No, no, ain't us have sold more records than me in there yet. Mm -hmm. Ray brought me in there. He still ain't. He ain't sell more records than me in there. Damn sure didn't. Nobody over there. So, listen, when I left the company, the heads of Sony called me and said, "Listen, nobody has sold these many records as an urban A and R." that covered all genres in that little bit of time. Fifth Harmony, I got Todd Dallas signed on one song. 10 million records sold. Another song got Gucci Man on it. Mm -hmm. Seven million sold. Then I kill him with the Havana record. How is you? And put Young Thug on it because I fought for the Atlanta artists. Uh, is that, 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 we don't, they don't give enough credit to the people in the room fighting. I, I, I hate that because success has many fathers and failure is a bastard. And they don't never, you got to start giving more credit to the people who are in the room. Like yes. Chubby, yeah, Chubby made epic more money than I did. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with saying that. I don't, that don't, that don't dim my light. No, I, hell no. But, that's, what I'm saying, but I, that's my point, but I don't give a fuck. Like nigga, I actually, you know what? I claim his win. Cause I'm the one brought him, yeah. I flew him up. So for me, it's like shit, I flew him up. 
That's what the fuck I bought him here for, for him to help us sell more records. He did, mm-hmm. he did, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Yeah, and then here's another thing. Most When I bought Chubby to Epic, everybody was like, why would you bring him to Epic and he's in Atlanta, you in Atlanta? I'm like, why the fuck not? Who's better to make money with and build with than your fucking friend? Mm-hmm. Niggas in this business don't care. People in this business don't care to help you. But you know the only people that don't want to help you are the people that know that they ain't shit. Because mm-hmm. a motherfucker that really believe in himself, he want to throw you the ball. Yeah. He want to see you win because he like, nigga, this is how we all win. And the motherfuckers that don't help you, they don't help you because if you come in the room, you're going to take their shit. That's what they don't want. I know that for a fact. Obviously, I've seen it, it for a fact. I've seen it. These motherfuckers will not help you. They will not. That's why Lil Wayne is so dope. How many artists sign an artist that becomes bigger than them? I only right. think Jay and Wayne. Rihanna and Kanye became bigger, and then Drake and Nicki like, mm-hmm. became bigger than Wayne at the time. Mm-hmm. And here's the crazy part. They all still close. Mm-hmm. That's because niggas appreciate it, but his, his, his fate does not hurt yours. It is enough room for all of us. We've been told that a lot, yeah, but that's not the Drake truth. Drake is the most unselfish artist in the music business. You said Drake? Yes. I agree. I love Drake. Drake put everybody on, man. Drake, Drake, Drake is more, that's more my, my brother... Because, like, if he was here right now, he know it. He said, we did right by you, Chubby. Mm-hmm. We stayed together. That's all I can ask for. Mm-hmm. So when I say I changed lives, right? I've changed lives and opened doors. I don't need, I don't need nobody's flowers. Because I'm the dirt. Mm. Mm, that's a you know what I mean? Bar. I'm, I'm always, I always tell people that. Bar. I'm the dirt that grow the flowers. Yeah. So you don't got to deliver me shit. Mm. You ain't gotta talk about me nothing, but I, but you walk outside, you are gonna see that dirt. But a, but a real nigga is gonna pour water on that dirt because he right. knows that's a fact, and that's the difference. You don't need it, but that doesn't mean someone shouldn't see you doing it and pour water on that dirt and sh- and help you win. Because to me, that's what real niggas do. Yeah. They help niggas feed their family. Period. Because I know Chubby was doing other shit, and then I watched him parlay that one meeting with Epic to all those records sold to everything he's done into shit. He got bigger jury on than me right now. I don't feel no goddamn kind of way. I love this nigga. I want everybody around me to be rich. Cause I I, I love that shit. And I tell people, I've done it with artists from Future to Savage to Light Skin Keisha to, to St. John. You know, all of these artists, like look at St. John. He's in in in, t- in three years he got two Grammys, awards. I don't he's a rock star, he's not even a rapper. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm doing so much different stuff, and I'm working with one of my idols. My idol became my business partner, Kareem Biggs Burke. Shout out to Biggs. He's the same guy that took me out the streets, him and Dame, and showed me a cam. 25 years later, is my business partner. Mm. That's love. See it all come full circle. Yeah, when your idols become your business partner, that means you have worked. This one. You full circled. I mean, I got Jay Z records, Rick Ross records, Drake records, Future records, Rihanna records. My my name, my credits is on a bunch of stuff. This is my producing stuff, my A and R stuff. I got stuff that I manage. I've done so much. Like, look look at St. John trap record with Lil Baby. I put Lil Baby in this record before Lil Baby was even hot. Mm. Cause I knew he was gonna be hot. <laughs> Something they can see the future. Yo, listen, I tell people all the time. I put Drake, I told Drama, I said, let's put Drake on the Versace remix. I put him on Versace remix. Mm. Damn. For the Migos. He's my brother. Coach, you know, because I had to get Coach and Future the Prince on the phone to clear the song. Mm. I play my role. But guess what? Pete and, and Coach got my back. When I need them for songs, they got, you. They got my back. Yeah. Everything that Fuck you, that. And I want to say, everything that you do don't have to financially benefit you today. No. I think that a lot of people go wrong because they always trying to figure out what's in it for me. Sometimes what's in it for you is great karma for what's coming for you that you can't see. Sometimes what's in it for you is, is these two dudes feeling like shit, like Chubb. Chubb didn't know I was in the room with L.A., a couple of days before I called him and he was like, I need an A and We didn't even talk about it. I was like, Chubby, let's get back. And then literally took him. I didn't know that shit. I didn't even know. But that's my thing. I, 
we gotta sometimes we're so grateful for the things we can't see, we gotta be grateful for the things we don't. Sometimes we're so grateful for the things that we see, we don't acknowledge the things we can't see that's working in our favor. And to me, that's why I think Chubb so legendary, because he ain't never did it for himself. I've never seen a man ask for shit. Mm-hmm. Never. <laughs> like literally never. Always pushing his own shit, hustling his own shit. He can ask, but he don't. Like shit, it'll come when it comes. Stay in my lane, man. And and it's Continue to help. If I can't help change a life, I always tell, I, I, I can't make people because God make people. Mm. But I can help people. Mm. So I always tell people that. You know, I've been in the limelight for a long time. I've been famous from being who I am longer than a lot of people. You know what I mean? And I still stay the same. Because it's just some fame, man. It's just fame, bro. You know how to balance it. You use it as a tool to help others. So to leverage it. Like, Ray's famous. He doesn't look at himself that way, right? Because he wakes up every day with a purpose yeah. to help people. Mm-hmm. When you think about helping people, you don't think about, yeah, of course we like nice things. And we will we get like those. what Drake likes. I right? like what Drake likes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But I tell my brother, I've been buying Rolexes since I was 15. I've been making money since I was 15. Everybody that knows me, if you know me from the streets, you know this is what I've been doing. It's nothing to brag about. What, money? I've been making money over 25 years, man. What be doing? Mm. That long. I've been broke, I've been up. I've been broke, I've been up. Because when you live life like this, you, you take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you abuse it. Let me rephrase that. You abuse it because you know when you wake up the next day, something somebody's going to call you with more money. <laughs> so you throw it away. Do I supposed to be buying all the stuff I be buying? No. But I buy it because I like it. And when I go outside, the women, the guys, everybody, it's just, yeah, I come in, look at my neck. Look at it. Talk your shit. <laughs> I love Chubby. Yo, listen, I made my jeweler famous. Yeah. Everybody screaming Eliente. That's my jeweler. But you are everywhere, my nigga. Like my jeweler <laughs> is Eliente. I put him on. He's big as shit. Yeah, I can't brag about this real life. I put Elliot with Future. They blew up together. Everybody's Eliente. That's crazy. That's crazy. So like. You 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 are literally everywhere. Like, would you say that as I'm not everywhere, I'm just in the right place. Mm. Being everywhere everywhere is, you need to be. Being everywhere is 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 that's a term of saying like you're not structured. That's fair. That's fair. I'm grounded. That's fair. I'm I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm in the right place. You know what I was you know you know you know what I, I like to say? I like to tell people I'm like, sometimes people are so focused on being in the right room, I just know whatever room I'm in is the right one because I'm yeah. in it. Is any room I'm in? I'm in. Bar. I'm in the room. That's why it's the right that's room. That's, why I, that's really how I feel. Like I don't need to sit at nobody's table because I feel like I'm, I'm good. On, I'm good at whatever table I'm at. We're gonna add value immediately. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go up immediately because that's what I bring. That's the only thing I know how to do. So I, I, I get tell, it. I tell people working with Jimmy, L.A., Sylvia Rome, Jay Z, and Biggs, Dame Dash. Who else I need to talk to? Don't ask me. <laughs> and not only that, he's still building and ain't asking for yeah. shit. No, Tell me the kind of friend you got to call him like, you need me for something? He ain't going to ask. Nah, man. So would I, you say that your biggest strength to this day has been like the connections you've been able to make or your ability uh, to make them? You know what's so crazy? My relationships help me all the time. But relationships only come from you being a good person. Because money don't make you a good person. Fame don't make you a good person. Mm-hmm. There's some people out there that don't like people that's famous. You got to be liked and loved. Mm-hmm. Look what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm, I'm at my, I'm at my, my first interviews at my, on my brother's podcast. It's real. So no, no matter what, this is the first thing I'm doing. It's to see like he this. planting with me. We plant seeds with each other. But it's because that's who we are. Like, I want to see him when he want to see me when. Hey, he told me he was coming. He called me this morning. I was like, I was about to do a whole other show. I'm like, Chubby's coming. Hit the whole group check. Chubby baby's coming. Get ready for Chubby. We were, he's coming. So, nah, man. But 
to me, I just, my thing is, I know you don't, you are the dirt, that's what you say, but hey, bro, you the shit, and I'm proud that I'm your friend, because I watched you. Thank you. The most important thing a man can do to me is take care of his family. I don't give a fuck. Sure. I don't give a fuck. If you made a billion dollars. If your mom's struggling, you you ain't. That ain't I tell people me. that all the time. The balance is family. Family. Right? That's where you get your blessings from. You know what I mean? I, I ain't gonna lie. It's hard outside because I'm a fly motherfucker and girls come at me. But I know I got a wife, <laughs> so I gotta balance that shit out. I mean, I mean actresses, you name it. They, they. If, if, I tell my motherfucker, you like if a girl like a chubby fat motherfucker, I'm Denzel Washington. <laughs> I'm <the fat> boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the Denzel of the fat boys. For real. I love it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But because I got personality too. Yeah. You gotta have conversation, man. Conversation gets you farther. Like my wife would say, I'll be in the supermarket. Y'all, this is a true story. I got in a plane one day. Talking to this white guy first class. We kicking it. Having a good conversation. I never asked him what he did. We got off the plane. He said, yo, give me your address. Here's my card. Man says it was the owner of Hublot. Wow. That's crazy. He sent me a Hublot watch. That's crazy. A $125,000 watch. He sends it to me. It's all being and angry. said, I love your spirit. A real nigga, like, just off a four and a half hour flight to LA. That's 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 fucking that's amazing. Up. Yo, man, so, if you talk to people and ask people how they day going, you never know what kind of answer you get from. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, you see a bum on the street. He was once to somebody before. Yeah. So you still treat him like that. Yeah. Still treat everybody, somebody. man. You from. You know, everybody that be interning for Ray, so when they get big, I treat them all with respect. Exactly. So when you see me, you can't say, oh, that motherfucker. If, you might, if I was an asshole to you, then you was an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. That's not as real shit. Because I, I just don't give myself off that kind of energy. Exactly. You know what I mean? But if you get energy, I'm going to give it back to you. So I know you was a fuck nigga first. <laughs> <laughs> And we had you know, to do that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And, <laughs> in, in, the, in the music business, we got to stick together more because it's a lot of fucking cut those shit that we do to each other, right? And why? The Jews don't cut each other's throats. Mm -hmm. The white boys don't cut each other's throats. But we want to be because we want to sit next to them. In reality, they want to just sit next to us. It's like if you know who you are, you can't be beat. Come on. You just, if you're confident who you are, you can't be beat. Nobody can beat you because the world could be going one way and you know this is the way I'm going. That's it. You can't be beat. I agree. We just need to stick together. You got to start sticking together more and having more unity because once we show that, if I cut Ray's hand, they're like, we got him. Mm -hmm. Chubby, that's Chubby weakness to Ray. Mm -hmm. And this is Ray weakness to Chubby. Mm -hmm. We lost. What are we standing for? But they kids is hanging out together. And they going to their private schools. And we and, and we beefing for what? Over, Over a fucking check that both of us can get if we just stay there and do our work. Yep. So I tell all my people out there, don't hate on me. Because a lot of y'all do hate on me. And, I, and that's cool. But you can't hate on me because it doesn't affect me. Nah, but you know what it is, though? But hating on you... They don't understand that it really is a reflection of themselves. Yeah. Like, it's people who I don't personally fuck with, but you'll never hear me say nothing negative about them. Because that's just, that's a reflection of who I am. Like, I'm not talking bad about you. That's not, I'd rather talk good about somebody I fuck with than talk bad about somebody I don't fuck with. I'm just not going to get caught up in You know what's crazy? That. We played both sides. We are the guys that cut the checks and made checks for people. Buyer and seller. Buying and selling. When you, when you can play both of those roles... L.A. said, yo, Chubby, your life's going to be different. I said, why? He said, because on your back ain't nothing but a checkbook now. <laughs> so real. You know the crazy thing? I got so many friends. I was thinking about that this morning. I got so many friends that are in power. No bullshit. Presidents, EVPs. And I've called them all. We talk on the phone, congratulate them on God. You can ask any one of them. I ain't never said what we doing together. 
Me neither. I can't. I, I just like sometimes I'll be like, damn, why don't I call a Dallas, a Dash, a G, or somebody be like, yo, what can we do? I just, in my mind, is like, I don't, I, if it's for me, it'll come my way. I don't seek it. Shout out to Dallas, man. Yeah. Dallas is my young boy, man. Me and Juels got Dallas fired from Def Jam. Yeah, I remember when he was working with Juels and yeah, his brother. Yeah, we ain't turned the project yet, man. But that helped him. Yeah, because he's at today. Yeah. It's all sacrifice. part of the story. I was, and, you know, and I respect the, all my young black executives. You know, Boo, you know, Dallas, um, Tunji, Archie. Yeah. You know, a lot of them, Latrice. It's a lot of people out there that that, nice. that we work with that we that we, we see they come up too. Yeah. You know what I mean, Tunji was Tubby's assistant. I met Tunji when he was first starting at Interscope, but he was Nikki Benjamin's assistant. Come on, man. I know Archie when he was Erica Grayson's assistant. Yep. And now they the CEO, CEO and, and, and CMO of Dev Jam. And the crazy thing is when we talk, we be talking about life. Like, how you doing? How the family doing? We don't even talk mm -hmm. about, like, what we doing together. Mm -hmm. no, me and Archie was, well, I was int um, intricate in putting the Rock Nation play with Archie in, in the Black Panther. Yeah, my, my boy Omar. Yeah, I, well, Omar, yeah, exactly. I don't even talk about that shit. It's like that's my friends, man. Like Sherry, yeah. Sherry was Sherry was our was working the front. She was our assistant yeah. at Rockefeller. Now she president of Rock Nation. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, people gotta remember. I'm from Dipset. I'm from that Rockefeller era. I'm from the era when they be yeah. having these little throwback parties. Like let's do a '90s. Party. No, I am the '90s because mm. <laughs> I was really living that shit. I love this nigga. Right, MPVs and Land Cruises and Act Legends. We was doing that shit. Yo, I be telling people, I can't make it up. Go to my throwbacks on my Instagram page. You, it looked like me today. Like paid in full. Come on, bro. Get money. Because that's, yo, man, I thought money would take away the pain. So I wanted to get all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie on that note. I ain't gonna lie on that note. <laughs> and that note, that we just, bro, I can't, I can't follow that. You can't say it behind that, man. That note, man, we just, this is the God show, my nigga. Like, I, I feel like this is going to be one of many chubby. I feel like everybody's going to be requesting request chubby to come back. We didn't get a chance to interview this nigga. I just said, yo, let him talk. He was like, yo, Ray, I got all these questions. Before. All the questions you got written down. I said, no questions. Yeah. Let him talk. You did tell me that. Just let him talk. Yeah. I promise you. It's certain people you just got to let them talk. They yeah, got this shit. I, I'm going to be real. I can't, I can't go off that. Off that. Preppy shit like that. I ain't, it ain't gonna work with me. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. Calling nigga preppy, saying? man. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, you know, not for you. Just saying. Nah, but, like, but, but nah, you know this. Right, but, but that be honest with you, that's the value though. Like, knowing who you, knowing who you working on. It's like, hey, Chubby, you can't do that with him. Some people, you gotta bring it out of them. Just Chubby, the just, on, man. just, <laughs> no, I've seen Chubby do one interview in the 15 years I've been his friend. This is the second time I've ever seen him do an interview. We got an exclusive. No, nah, I mean, it was, but it's a, it's a friend exclusive, though. It's like he, yeah. nobody else we even showed up for. So I'm just glad to hear, man. I love you, my brother. I appreciate you being on the love show. You too, man. And we gonna, this shit going to go crazy on the internet. <laughs> let's, let, let's give my man his props, man, all of that shit. He came down and he really invested in Atlanta. He put in work here, and he helped build this shit. He's one of the architects of the current Atlanta music industry. Fuck that. I ain't going nowhere. And you helped build the New York industry. What are you talking about? All that shit. Shit, man. Hell yeah. What you working on? Do you want to rap and tell what you working on? St. John right now. That's, um... And the, and the gumbo. The line. The oh, yeah. And the, shout out to the gumbo. If you ain't got the gumbo, use the dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you now. Listen, man. The cannabis business is really booming, and... Me and my, my me and my childhood friend Luca Brazzi, you know he, this is his his dream, and once again, I come in to help my brothers, cause help your people, man. It's cool to be a number two. I ain't tripping about number two, cause if the number one is the is winning, then number two is winning. Damn sure winning. Shit, will you ever be a number three? You could be a number one or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So. I just wanted to give him more structure to the gumbo, uh, to the business part of it. Now we in the cookie stores, and this thing is really like taking off to the next level, man. So, 
Yeah, I'm in the cannabis business. That means you can't walk up on me and think I'm going to sell you something. No. You got to go to the store. You know what I mean? It's a whole different ball game. Shout out to Cookies. You know what I mean? We all over. Madison Square Gumbo, man. Let's get it, man. And we That's out, it. man. This is the God Show. Shout out to Tamara Shane here, but you know. Shout out to the whole Trey, Radar Trey, family. Trey, Trey, Trey filmed it pretty good and shit. Shout out to the family, man. We out, man. Thanks, Chubb. Let's get it. How we look? We looking good on there?